Hey Morales community and welcome back to another video. I'm Joseph, your Web3 instructor. And in this video, I will show you how you can create a dApp that lets your users connect their MetaMask wallet and display their NFTs. We're going to use the Morales API to fetch the data of those NFTs along with the Wagme React hooks to make it easy for the users to connect their wallet. So in this dApp, I have created this simple design so once we hit MetaMask, if you aren't connected already, it's going to pop up MetaMask. But if you are already connected to MetaMask or logged in, it's going to display your NFTs immediately. And now I have connected my wallet. And here you can see that it displays all my NFTs that I have. Pretty cool. So I'm going to show you the code and dive deep a little bit more into the logic behind all this. And also go through the API so we can build this dApp together. Now inside Visual Studio Code, you can see I have my root folder, the display NFT after connect. And within that one, we have a front end and a back end folder. And if we start with back end, I have installed four dependencies as always, course, .env, express and Morales. And we're using .env because we don't want to display our API key up front in our index.js file. Instead, let's create a .env file right here in the root folder. And within there, let's add our API key and store it as a variable. Now, if you don't have your API key already, make sure you go to morales.io to create your free account, log into your admin dashboard, and then go to Web3 APIs. And from here, you can copy your API key. Back into Visual Studio Code, let's jump into the index.js. And you can see right here, we have an express app that's running on port 5001. We're also including or importing the Morales library. And at the bottom, we can see we run the start function that they provide along with our API key. And then we also listen to our server. Now, this server is very simple. We only need one get endpoint, which is the slash get NFTs. And once we hit this endpoint, our server is going to do a request to the get NFT get wallet nfts endpoint along with our address and the chain so once it gets the response back from the api it's gonna send the response to our front end so let's jump into the front end folder and see what's happening in there and this is a next.js application so make sure you install next.js along with axios and then wagme so we can use the wagme react hooks uh, to make it easy for the user to log in with their MetaMask. And what we need to do first within the app.js file is we need to add the pro providers that Wagme gives us, and then we need to set up our client. In our case, I've only set up the MetaMask connector because that's what we're going to use. But if you want to give your users more opportunities to use other wallets to connect, that's very easy to do. Once we've done that, let's pass along the client to the React app and, and use that within our application. So inside index.js, what we want to do here first is to see if the user is already connected. And that's what our use effect hook does right here. And it's listening to is connected that's provided to us by Wagme through use account. So if the user isn't connected, then we're going to display this title right here along with the button and which in our case is the metamask connect button if the user is connected then we're going to display this logged in component which i have created as a holder of the get nft component so let's jump straight into that one and we can see right here that we are once again using the wagme hooks to get out the address that the user is connected with in our case, we can set the chain ID as a hard-coded uh, variable right here. This is for the Polygon network, but you can change this to be, let's say through a drop-down menu as we have done in previous tutorials, where the user can choose uh, the NFTs they want to see on their wallet on specific networks. Now with this data, the address and the chain ID, we can do a request to our server using Axios that we installed previously. And our server is on port 5001 and the endpoint is slash get NFTs. So we're passing along the address and the chain that we are later using in our backend to make API requests through Morales. Once we get the response back, we want to set it to this 
uh, NFTs var variable that we declared up here, like so. And at the same time, we're constantly logging the response. I'm gonna show you how it looks like because here we don't take the whole response and storing it. We're just taking that data, that result. Once we've done that. We're passing along this data to the card component, which eventually is going to render everything. So we can take a quick look at this component as well. And right here, we're basically mapping through the data we're getting to see how it looks. How, how does the metadata look in this um, NF, specific NFT? Because all NFTs probably have different metadata structures so we're taking a look at those and if they're uploaded to let's say ipfs or other storage platforms and then we display the data that's provided to us and if we don't have a name or an image that we can provide then we're just showing this title right here cool so that's basically it so i want to go back to the documentation just to show you real quickly the API endpoint that we are using by Morales. And then after that, I'm gonna demonstrate to you the application once again and show you the logs that we're getting back before we display them. So within the documentation, we can see that this is the get wallet NFTs endpoint we're using, which is under the, the NFT API. And we have a few parameters, actually a lot of parameters to play around with. In our case, as we saw, we're using the address, which is required, and then we're using the chain ID. Now, if you want to work more with these parameters, you can take a look at them right here and even play around in this box right here. We're using the Node.js SDK that Morales provides us, but if you want to use another backend language, you can easily choose your preferred one from the top right here or from this drop-down menu and then play around and test it out right here. And you can see the response that's coming back. Great, so now once again, let's go back to the application. I'm gonna refresh this page and open up my inspector console. So you can see this is the response we're getting back. In our case, we went through data.result and this is what we're displaying right here. Now it's as easy as this and you can see all the data that's getting back for each and every NFT and then decide what you want to show and what not. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, make sure you post them below. I will take a look at the comment section and answer all your questions. With that said, I hope I will see you in the next video.